Hey there folks, welcome back to Let's Play Nobunaga's Ambition Sphere of Influence tutorial walkthrough. I am the Mysterious JG. In our last video, uh, Masahide Hirate here has been teaching uh, Hideyoshi Kinoshita about, well, basically, development and diplomacy. Haven't gotten to a whole lot else yet. So we're going to continue on, as in theory we're building up an army to go attack somebody. But uh, Kinoshita has one concern, and in an exciting cliffhanger last time, I left you wondering what that could be. Well, Masahide also wants to know what it is. Let's hear it. Truth be told, sir, though the young master went and left the Oda in my hand, I am still young and inexperienced. Let's do that again. I lack family and retainers I can depend on. This leaves me worried, wondering if I can really lead this clan well. I see, I see. Yet, Kinoshita, we are in an age of war and chaos. That way of thinking is old, dated. It's dotted. Masamune dotted. An old man called my thinking old. If you lack retainers you can trust, you need only gather them by any means necessary. Yet, I haven't heard rumors of any ronin of note around town. If the answer lies not within, then you must look without. From the covert menu, entice other clan's officers to foster their dissatisfaction. Uh, Kanbei Kuroda is working for the Ashikaga Shogunate. Uh, wait, I'm confused. Kanbei is working with, with their. Oh, they're associated with the Mori, okay. Yeah, the. Uh, that's the, that I thought was the emperor there, that uh, Yoshiaki Ashikage. Much like with diplomacy, if you keep on them and don't give up, they'll eventually answer your requests, even to join you. I see. Well then, I'll go conspire with Sir Shibata at Suimori Castle and have him defect to our side. Yeah, you know, Shibata and uh, Hideyoshi apparently weren't all that friendly. Which, uh... Depending on how this, like, playing through and doing the historical path, I don't know quite how it's going to pan out, but we might actually see that later. Wait, Kenoshita. The only people you can conspire with are officers who are dissatisfied with their clans. With a man as loyal to Lord Nobukatsu as Sir Shibata, we wouldn't have any luck. Wait. Shibata is working with the Nobukatsu... Oh, Nobukatsu and Nobunaga, I think there's going to be some uh, infighting to unify the Oda under one leader, which has not happened yet. Hmm, in that case, what should I do? I've heard that in the Saito clans, Inabayama Castle resides a young genius named Hanbei Takanaka. He seems to be displeased with how he's being treated. Yeah, so this character they're discussing, um, I guess he probably debuted in Samurai Warriors 3, which was only for the Wii. Uh, so the first time I ever got to see him was in Samurai Warriors 4, where he's basically portrayed as being a little kid. Uh, they do make reference to the fact that he's with the Saito clan, though, because he's he's on friendly terms with No and with... Um, well, I can't remember the character's name, but I think it's actually that guy, Kanbei Kuroda, who's like the... Uh, in Samurai Warriors, is portrayed as this, like, creepy-ass, elderly, quasi-undead wizard. <laughs> but, um, he's also in Warriors Orochi 3, where, bizarrely, it's him, the younger of Suma Yi's two sons, and Ma Chao, who are, like, the starting group fighting off the demon army. So, yes. What's my point? No point. Um... <laughs> The Warrior series. Uh, it, the, the thing about the Warrior series, when you when you're relating them to RTK and, and Nobunaga's ambition, generally the characters who are famous enough to get worked into the Warriors games, as bizarre and historically un inaccurate as the Warriors games will be, they only grab characters who are important enough to history that they end up being pretty awesome in Nobunaga's ambition and RTK anyway. Sir Hanbei Taka Takanaka, was it? It's the first I've heard his name, but I'm sure he's a wonderful person. 
Yeah, it's weird. He's a little kid, and his whole gimmick seems to be he's smart, but he's lazy. He likes taking naps. That's basically his backstory. Well, I'll get right to work, then. That's the spirit. If his defiance gets high enough, you could use the collude command to set up his defection as well as make other deals. I thought we were trying to become allies with Saito. Is, is it going to affect anything that we're actually... Yeah, I'm just thinking about this here. Like, is our friendship with the Saito clan and our trust with the Saito clan affected by the fact that we're going to start colluding with their officers? You could weaken the enemy and strengthen yourself without fighting. Now, that's what I'd call strategy, wouldn't you? However, other clans can conspire with your retainers as well. Make sure not to let your own people get the best of you. I do not get them the best, the best, the best, the best to me. Yeah, don't know the words. Sarate, you wouldn't talk to anyone suspicious, right? Of course not. I have vowed unyielding loyalty to the Yoda clan. The likes of colluders have no effect on me. Well, even if someone tried to conspire with you with a voice that loud, everyone would know right away. Hey, Kirishita, don't make fun of me. Give me my sword, and I'll kill you and offer you a spirit to Lord Nobuhide. So sorry, well, I'll get to conspiring. So we could develop the town, but in fact we're supposed to conspire. Takes us straight here. We have Hanve Takanaka. Loyalty is low. His discontent is zero, but his loyalty is not good. They have a, a little blue figure, an orange figure, and a red figure. Blue figure means that your loyalty to your clan is well above your required level before you can defect. Orange means you're getting in the danger zone, yeah. And red basically means you're ready to leave because you fucking hate it there. So his, requ his uh, required loyalty is 11, his loyalty is 10. We'll send this guy. It should bring his projected discontent up to four. It's going to take a month that way. Maybe we better put you in charge instead. Remove him as overseer. It's still going to take forever. Hold on a second. I know it doesn't matter. It's only the tutorial, but I still... I thought I was supposed to be doing this, too. Keep that development going, and... Uh, We'll send uh, Mr. Hat here to uh, to work on Hanbei. He's like, hey, Hanbei, uh, I have a name that starts with an H2. Why don't you join me? I'm very well. I'll go and have a secret meeting with Hanbei Takanaka. With Bull Nakanaka. No. Get some good persuading done. Apparently, the... Uh, What is the thing that lets me, uh... Oh, extra. So, they're friendly. Trust of 25. There's diplomacy going on. And yet... Elsewhere... There's some place where we're up to no good. Well, anyway, I was hoping we could actually figure out a... Hope we could actually get a little bit more information. Well, what's their diplomatic status is refused? There is no room for negotiations. Huh. They want to stay friendly. You want a car! You want a car! Okay. So I'm continuing to develop troops, even though I don't think we can really lose the tutorial battle that's coming. Your up. orders. Got to be careful, though. That RTK-10 tutorial got a little bit challenging near the very end. 
when they set a hard time limit on taking out one of Liu Zhang's cities. Here's last month's balance. Yeah, I'm spending way more money than I'm bringing in with all this. Reporting in. My my, she's quite the beauty. Look at the way she flings her poop. She's definitely a nine. Heck, she could hit a ten easy. Well, of course she could hit a ten. I mean, she could just walk up to a woman slightly prettier than her and punch her in the face. You know, she what are you doing spying into that tube on the key? The poop tube. Oh, oh Sir Harate, this, this tube you see is called a telescope. It lets you see far, far away, and well... I was looking over the town to make sure the orders I'd given were being carried out. It sounded like you were mumbling to yourself about girls to me, but no matter. How goes the town? It's for the hot beauties... Oh, wow, he actually is going to say this. Quite a few beauties have gathered, and watching them frolic about is simply... Uh, I mean, a fun familiar tower has appeared in the commercial district, from what I could see. Oh my god. Like, unfamiliar towers are just appearing in the city. Like, you know, they're made of this, like, sort of black metal that light can't escape from it. There's an aura of evil from this. <laughs> Some kind of uh, satanic uh, invasion or something. These demons are popping up throughout the city. That's a famous site, because Owari is home to all kinds of famous temples and shrines. Many visit from other lands to see them. Ah, so that's why all these beauties haven't been around. Uh, I haven't seen around, have. I mean, quite a few out-of-towners have come to visit. Yet we've got so many people visiting that I have to wonder, is there any way we can use what's drawing them to help our town's development? Good eyes on you, Kirushita. That's today's lesson, adding facilities. Developing alone will eventually bring your town's advancement to its limit. And when it does that, that's when you want to think about adding facilities. Selecting the Add button from the Infrastructure command will have bases that are sufficiently developed start flashing yellow. If you select one of those bases and build a facility on a yellow flashing district, you can improve that district and open up the town, open the town up to even further developments. I see. So I just need to look for towns, the towns flashing bases and build in my towns when I can't develop anymore. But what does this have to do with famous sites? Good question. I was just getting that. Famous sites are a type of resource. If you have resources, you can build special facilities. If you've got a famous site in a commercial district, then you can create an inn, a building that boosts the town's commerce and draws even more inhabitants. So if I build an inn, I can approach those girls. Great idea. I'll get right on it. Don't build it for yourself, it's for the people. Don't forget that. Yeah, whatever. Can of cheetah starts building brothels everywhere. I know, I know. By the way, I can see three symbols next to the word famous site. What might those be? Those display what type kind of district can make use of that resource. Yellow means the current district type is a match, and the building that special facility will allow you to use the resource. Oh, I don't think I figured this out in my off screening actually. Hmm. The white type means that if you change the district type to that one, then build a facility, you can use the resource. If you change the district type into the gray one, however, you won't be able to use the resource. A famous site allows you to build a special facility in a craft or conscript district, but is apparently useless in a crop one. Hmm. So I should refer to this when I'm choosing my district types, then. Exactly. Also, there are cases in which unknown resources sleep within districts you haven't expanded into yet. Choose survey from the investigate command that might allow you to discover resources hidden in your base. Oh, cool. So then I can be in your base killing all your resources. I've heard that surveying can find you mines and hidden pathways, too. I'd better get on that, then. You don't need to hurry and try to do everything all at once. First, just select Add, then select the commercial district with the famous site in it and construct an inn. So... This, there's no resources that are known here. These have not been expanded to. Here are resources that are... Or these are districts that we are using and working, but they haven't developed enough. And obviously this is the one I want to do. 
so for the resources it says it has to be commercial oh, which is what it currently is currently there's a fair Craft's development speed increases. Effect continues after changing structure. Can we even select these? Not yet. Okay. And we'll make the district more suitable for crafts. Population increases much, increases much more quickly. That's really good. Like, of all the things that you can increase... Like, you know... This makes... This will make... Um, suitable uh, adjacent districts suitable for crops and crafts and allows you to build a foundry in your castle I don't really remember what the foundry does studios golden tea houses um, increase innovation so a lot of the time I'll try to grab tea houses when I can there's also uh, certain places if you have the right resources you can build a uh, like a gunsmith I think is what it's called or an armory um, yeah, the things that you build, yeah, the facilities you build in the town affect the uh, the things that you can build in the castle that's attached to that town. And uh, I haven't gotten late enough in for gunpowder to even come into to play, but there are ones that, you know, help you do better with cavalry. There are ones that help you do better with guns. That's kind of what I would think would be the big one. And then uh, innovation, I think, is a good thing to increase. In general, but no, the big thing is population growth. He is already uh, in charge of something else. Let me have you do it. Why not? Oh, begin building immediately. I have an awesome home too. So we'll just let the turn play out. Since I've talked off the Saito clan, we can now request reinforcements. Want me to continue diplomacy? Uh, no, because that's basically the point. You max out your trust so that you can get them to assist you in battle, I think, once, and then... I don't remember exactly how the numbers work, but it uh, costs a certain amount of gold to raise your diplomacy. If you get it up to 100, you get the ability to request reinforcements, and then when you request reinforcements, their trust for you goes down. It's kind of like this running tally of how much... Uh, how much credit you've got with them, but there's no reason to keep that going. Oh, I'm wrong. Never mind. I got it up to 40. Your orders. That's the minimum at which you can re request reinforcements, because your trust drops by 40 when you request reinforcements. So actually, yeah, I could have kept him going, um, chatting up the Saito, but it's not much Here's point. last month's balance. It's just a uh, tutorial, so the whole thing will end. Uh, Fairly early on. Reporting in. We've been a harvest of rice. We've gained provisions. Oh, maybe I should have put uh, a better officer on uh, the inn. No, the inn's done, done being built. I was thinking. Your orders. It, Here's last month's balance. Took a while. Reporting in. Of all some bean bags and tiddlywinks, I wonder if these will be good enough. What a coincidence running into you here. So, Kinoshita, how's building the end going? Smoothly. What do you mean we haven't been talking this whole time? Ah, it's going as planned, but I came across something unexpected. Truly, well, it looks to me like the town's gotten a lot more lively. I was surely gone thinking I'd make this in and start speaking to the young ladies gathered around town, but for some reason this little girl named Nene took a liking to me. Oh, Nene. <laughs> and now here I am buying some toys for her. Haha, <laughs> impure wishes don't get granted, Kinoshita. Yeah, that's a thing. Alright, um, you know how some of the cultural content that comes out of Japan is kind of creepy? Well, I read in translation um, The Tale of Genji, which is like, you know, the most famous uh, Japanese novel, I guess. And as, like, a young adult, he, he, he's meeting, like, prepubescent girls that he finds, he thinks are attractive, so he adopts them and, uh, has them raised by women who train them, you know, the, you know, prepubescent girls now, I'm talking, like, like, little girls, 
he will adopt them and he trains them you know they're trained up and they're taught how to, to write beautiful calligraphy because that's a big turn on for uh, Genji and to play music and dance or whatever and then when they get old enough well there, there's one in particular um, what was her name uh, oh man I can't remember Murasame maybe well, whatever the word for purple her name meant purple and I can't remember what the Japanese word for purple is but yeah though that was a, that was a thing he's like you know Meets her when she's like eight, and then when she hits thirteen, he marries her and starts having sex with her. Because, you know, he's, he's, I think, in his like early twenties. I don't even know. But impure wishes don't get granted, Kinoshita. You're not Genji. However, looking at Nagayu Castle from outside like this really brings to attention how weak its de defenses looked. Indeed, Nagayu Castle wasn't built for war, you see. Yet, we can't leave it like that, I'd wager. Kinoshita, how about upgrading the castle? No, no, I plan on going on offense all the time, so no one ever gets to attack me. Upgrading, but I wouldn't be sure where to begin. You don't need to think too hard about it. First, select Upgrade from the Infrastructure Command, and choose the type of upgrade you'd like to perform. Hmm, so for types, we have Tenchu... Oh, it's Tenchu Muyo. <laughs> Sorry. Gates, walls, and so on. This certainly makes it easier to choose. And you can build a Bailey! And then you can root for her um, and watch the inflatable tube men as she does battle with Sasha Banks. Once you've chosen the type, chosen the type choose the upgrade, just like you would with the AI command. The AI command? That's <laughs> then select the officer to head the project. After that, you'll finish, because I'm going to kill you. Say, that sounds easy. In that case, I'll just pound... Pound out a grand four-story tenchu for starters. Come now, Kinoshito, use your head. It's not going to be that easy. If I make him too angry, he'll start eyeing my sword again. <laughs> Better handle this old man with care. He's very quick to turn towards lots of suicide. Might I ask for more details? There's a set of land around the castle that governs the limits of the improvements you can install. Furthermore, a four-story tenchu requires stone walls to form its foundation. Without those walls, you can't add it. So I should keep a careful eye on my castle or fortress's land when I'm planning my upgrades? Exactly. And know that upgrades aren't just for defense. There are some that improve offense and civil development as well. In particular, castle facilities. To install them, you will need to develop your town above a certain point. Or have a specific resource, but they come in handy. Guaranteed. He looks like he's in a good mood again. <laughs> I don't know. Was he really that close to, to thoughts of suicide there? Then to start, I'll upgrade our nearly broken down fence into an earth wall. Always good to see a youngster who'll listen. Good luck in your renovations. I'm going to go kill myself. <laughs> so, use labor to start upgrading your castle. And, uh we were so there's different things you can build castle facilities uh, you need a resource I think just about every town is gonna have at least one resource but um, there are other invisible limitations on when you're allowed to upgrade and have a facility in your castle but they haven't quite worked out yet my off screening but um, Buddhist temple and chapel are kind of you're, you're, well, you obviously can't have both because you're not going to have two of anything. Um, like two different facilities in your castle anyway. But uh, these are like whole different paths. Uh, base, this is good for you if you've got a lot of conservative guys. This is good if you've got a lot of creative guys. I think they meant progressive, actually. Uh, tea Retreat is for neutral... Maximum popularity increases. It's weird. Gold tea houses, I thought that it increased. Uh, whatever. You got baths, which help officers overcome illness. Arsenals. Resistance to storm attack increases, and muskets received once per year. This is the one I'm going to go for whenever I have the opportunity. Uh, but it's depending on it's dependent on finding iron as a resource, which isn't going to happen just everywhere. Um... But if it does, you need to make sure that you hone in on the uh, 
hone in on the facilities that would allow you to actually build an arsenal. And riding ground is good for your cavalry, because you get horses once per year. Uh, so that's not a bad one either. Uh, official trader, which brings merchants more often. The depot gives you more food. Foundry, uh, shipyard. Yeah, moving on. What we're actually meant to be doing is building. Oh, and baileys. These are different kinds of uh, like defenses that fight back when you're attacked. And uh, the most advanced one, I guess, is called the Sonata Keep. And uh, you need to actually have a uh, officer of the Sonata clan. So it's I'm not really going to concentrate on those because the uh, Sonatas were... When they did pop up too much in the uh, Oda story, they were pretty much enemies of the Oda. Uh, you can have different kinds of turrets. This is also uh, relates to defending your uh, castle. And the enclosures... Increases hit points and population increase. Oh yeah, you're basically okay. That makes sense. You're you're taking a section of your village and actually putting it behind the walls to protect the villagers, sort of. So it, it it relates to domestic stuff. But the earth wall is what we're actually meant to be doing. Let's begin immediately. Immediately, immediately, immediate. Oh my. Let us begin the meeting. Let us begin the begin. Here's last month's balance. So again, we're we're rain, like rushing through money. You need to pace yourself a bit in this game, uh, or you're gonna go broke. Reporting but it's a tutorial, so they're showing us all these different ways you can spend money. Wouldn't be that exciting if we waited several turns between each major project. Looks like I've grown stronger. Something that's going to continue. That basically means he leveled up an attribute, I believe. It seems the seeds of defiance you planted in Sir Hanbei's heart through entice has finally grown in full. Probably should have sent one of us instead of a generic... Well, not generic, but less famous officer to get that happen faster. Yeah, keeping him, keeping on him for so long is finally going to pay off. He should give in and join us by now. Yet there's one thing at the back of my mind. Well, aren't you worrisome? What is it? It's about Sir Hanbei himself. No one has ever cast eyes on the man's face. Nobody's ever seen him before. We don't know what he looked like. He's got curly blonde hair, and he got big muscles, and he's got big bands on his muscle. But nobody ever seen him before. Here's a detailed description of him. But just bear in mind, nobody ever seen him before. Sorry, I'm uh, referencing uh, the guy from Harlem, which I will have you know uh, I was actually familiar with, and. Uh, friends and I would watch that and laugh at it before uh, Rift Tracks. But um, this LP did not come before Rift Tracks. This LP will be continuing, however, in the next video. So next time, we're going to find out just what is the deal with Hanbei Takanaka. Because while no one has seen his face, I have a feeling we'll be seeing it soon when he joins our force. I'm Sirius JG. Hope you've been enjoying the tutorial so far. We're coming up, I'd say, on the second half of the tutorial, but it is a long one. And uh, I'll keep it going next time. Goodbye.